just a little bit of history here in western New York. Bob Lanier and the St. Bonaventure Bonnies, size 22 shoe. Took the Bonnies to the Final Four in 1970, and if he had not been hurt, you can find quite a few people that will tell you maybe they win a national title going up against John Wooden and UCLA in 1970. He had an outstanding playing career, a majority of his career with Detroit, with the Pistons, and then wrapping up for the Bucks. It's amazing to think that this small Catholic school in Ole in New York has had such rich basketball history. As you look up in the rafters, you see Sam Stitt there. He played alongside his younger brother, Tom Stitt, at Bob Lanier Court. And then Jalen Adams and Matt Mobley getting them over the hump, winning a game in the tournament. And now I asked the head coach, Mark Schmidt, do you have to hit the reset button? And he says, well, when you have seniors that graduate, you've got to start playing young guys and bring them along. And coming into this game, they'd won three of four, and they've just been outclassed by a, a talented, determined VCU squad in this particular matchup. To block a Ladarian Griffin, his third. He said they don't reload, but they also don't rebuild. You just take a slight step back, hopefully not too big of one, as the new guys learn, and then it comes again in waves. Well, I think at the mid-major level, you got to play young guys because in two, three years, those are the guys that are going to be you know, pushing you forward. Here's the world of small worlds. Six degrees of separation. Michael Gilmore for VCU. If the last name sounds familiar, he is the nephew of Artis Gilmore. 70 Final Four, St. Bonaventure, Bob Lanier. Artis Gilmore's Jacksonville team, the team that knocked him out. He's cousins with Happy Gilmore. <laughs> That's actually a lie. Do not believe that. <laughs> I made that up. See you at Red Lobster. They break the press. That's blocked. Douglas, his third in the A-10 in rejections, and that's his second emphatic one today. And a held ball, mixing it up with Griffin. You know, we've talked so much about Santos Silva. But remember this name, Corey Douglas. Give me some of that. Nearly two blocks a game. He's third in the A-10 in block shots. So watch the timing. Now, his offensive game is still a work in progress. Some would say still raw, a little bit of a project, but defensively, as good as it gets in this league. One of the better shot-blocking teams in the nation as a whole. Santos Silva's really good at it. Douglas is really good at it. We saw Evans trailing at 6-2 with a block in the first half. It's an added dynamic to what's already just a mess to play against defensively. Foul was on Evans, and it sends Stocker to the line. And as he did in the first half with foul trouble, Mark Schmidt leaving Stockard in the game with four fouls here in the second. Oshuniyi, on the other hand, and that's the difference of being a sixth-year senior and a first-year freshman. Four fouls, he's on the bench. What's different about that? What do you learn about how not to foul as you get older? Well, it's just the game is slowed down. I mean, I made that joke before about four years ago. You were in eighth grade. <laughs> yeah. But the game does really slow down. And, you know, when I used to step on the floor my first year at St. John's, see, Mike Rose is like the call. But the game was going like a million miles an hour. And then my last year at Northwestern, I could almost play in slow motion. There's a back tap. I mean, it's in slow motion right now. That was easy for Evans. Watch the ball move for VCU. It's moving side to side. They're getting good looks, easy drives. Evans able to finish. Mark Schmidt said, you can't think this game. You just have to know it. And you think as a freshman. Stockard, great feed. And much like in the first half, you can't fault the offense. Good looks. And Mark Schmidt was telling Griffin there he's going to shoot that. Nice play. There's a three for a team that hits them at a 29% clip. VCU can do no wrong in this game. Oh, 
check out Evans here knifing through the defense. He scored over a thousand points in two years at Rice, then he had the injury. But Mike Rhodes talked about always maintaining a relationship with him way back when he was a kid, recruited him at VCU, brought him down to Rice, and then the Chesapeake, Virginia native has come back to VCU, and he's really their leader because he's been through the wars. And I think everyone feeds off of him. As Mike Rhodes has talked about the camaraderie of this team and how they like each other. And you could just watch a defensive possession or two and realize these guys are all locked in on the same page. You know, I had guys, teammates, that would get knocked to the floor. I wouldn't pick them up. I didn't like them. <laughs> but you could see the benches involved. And right now, the defense and the offense clicking equally. Which says a lot for a team that plays one senior. Here's Bird, true freshman, and that is as pure as it gets. VCU. This is imposing your will on the road. Poiser. We've got a foul underneath. This is on the Rams. And St. Bonaventure is not an easy place to win. This is, we talked about it in the first half, the second best home court advantage in the Atlantic 10. It's a tough one to get to. You fly in to Pennsylvania, still have to bus about another 40 minutes. And Donnie Epperly with the call underneath the bucket. That's going to be that's five on Stockard. Stockard's game is over. And that's your Saturday in a nutshell. So Stockard has fouled out 11 points, three of nine shooting. That's after. He was two of 16 in the win against Duquesne on Wednesday. I would not want to be one of the next two teams St. Bonaventure plays. My gut tells me you're going to get a really good Courtney Stocker. Motivated. Good shot fake. Into traffic. Griffin cannot finish. That was something between a pass and a shot. And here's Poiser and a block on VCU. It's been all Rams. Horns down, charge ahead.